Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Bringing you another fly time video. This week I'm going to do a dry fly. It's a beetle pattern. I haven't shared a beetle in a while or a dry fly in a while for that matter. And uh, it's one I stumbled across on a website called Global Fly Fisher. Um, you know, I don't have any problem at all giving reference whenever I find something. If it's a book that I get it from or something like that, I'd like to share that. Global Fly Fisher is a great resource, .com, I should say. Um, it's a great online resource. They actually take YouTube videos like mine, share them on their website, uh, guys from all over the world. And this guy here that tied this one is, uh, his first name's Dimitri, he's from Russia, and I'm not even going to try to begin to pronounce his last name. I don't want to do it a disjustice. Um, if you get on there on Fly Fisher, sorry, globalflyfisher.com, uh, you'll probably stumble across his. He's got some extremely realistic bee patterns and snails and beetles and stuff. Really great tire. Uh, so I highly suggest checking that out. One thing I want to point out, I, I kind of blaze over it in the video. I'm using CDC for the collar on this, just regular old CDC feathers. And I take two feathers to make the collar on it. I'll take two of them, place them together like front to back. So if this is the bottom of the feather, this is the top, I'll put top to bottom, I guess I should say. Uh, two together and then clamp one side of it in my CDC clamp, my Swiss CDC clamp, which I absolutely love. Place it in one side of it like that. Trim right down along the feather shaft. So I remove, I get two collars out of one feather, one on each side. And uh, like I said, I kind of just brush over that real quick in the video because I've done it on other videos. And uh, if you're following along by now, you've probably seen a lot of my other videos. So anyways, guys, I love tying this beetle. I'm really excited to fish it. I just stumbled across it. I thought I would share it with you. Um, it floats really well. I've put it in a cup and uh, Fourth of July for me is my Japanese beetle time. I'm going to be throwing this. This also, um, you can even tie it for a caddis. It would even work great for a caddis pattern too. So experiment, try it when you're out on the water, and uh, I'm sure it's going to work for you. Here you're going to see a fly in the vise and then the material list to tie it. Okay, here you see the Nerova foam beetle in the vise. Such a cool looking fly. Uh, I'm excited to fish this one. And uh, let's get into tying it. I'm going to start out, we're going to build the foam body on this. And you can use a needle here. I'm actually using, this is a piece of steel leader uh, used for salt, fly, salt water fishing. And, uh, but it's just a good solid piece of wire there that's going to hold this foam for me. I'm going to start out with some thread. I'm using 140 denier. This is dark olive. Use whatever color you have. Something dark. Black would work fine. Next thing I'm going to put on is the piece of foam. This is a two millimeter foam black. I cut that about a quarter of an inch wide. And we're going to tie it on on this piece of wire here or your needle, whatever you have. And I'm just going to wrap back over it. And I want to go about, I'm going to say about a half an inch. And then I'm not like cranking real hard on it to wrap it down tight to that. I want to be able to pull this off here in a minute. So I'm wrapping down enough that it's firm, but not tight. Next thing we're going to put on is some gold tinsel. This is the gold silver uh, medium size. We're just going to wrap that on there and then pull it back out of the way. Next thing is some dubbing. Uh, normally I've been using dark stone here. I just ran out of it at my studio. And so I just grabbed some Helgramite SLF pattern blends. But go with dark stone. That works nice. Any black color. Doesn't have to be pattern blends. If you want to do a black bodied beetle. Uh... You saw in my picture, I've done some other ones, done some other colors. 
You could make this an October caddis if you want with some brown or light orange color. Um, go with greens, make a caddis. Experiment, play around. This will turn, this will work for a caddis pattern too. So just dub that length, that half inch length of foam there that we tied down. And then we're gonna wrap our tinsel up. Make nice even ribs and wrap it off. And like I said, you don't wanna wrap down real, real hard because you wanna be able to pull this off here in a second. So trim our tinsel off. And then do a quick whip finish. And then we're going to pull this foam body off of our shank here. So just grab one, pull it right off like that. All right, now that we have the body made, now we're going to get into tying the body onto the hook. For a hook, we're using a fire hole 413. Um, this is a size 14. You can tie it in a 12. Just mess around, experiment. Put your thread on the hook there. Again, I'm using that 140 denier brown olive. Next thing I want to use is, I'm using a little bit of black spinning deer hair. Um, I'm just using black deer hair, dyed deer hair. Doesn't have to be black, but I'm trying to make legs on this. So I'm just pulling out a little clump of it. I got way too much there. So I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to pull my fingers through and pull the fluff and the under, under hair out of that. And I don't want too much there. I want a small little clump. This is actually going to make the legs on the beetle. So we're going to stick that on top of the hook and you see I don't want them to be much more. This is a short shanked hook. I don't want much more than that short shanked hook length. So we're just going to set them up top, tie it down. That's a little bit longer than I want, so I'm going to slide them up that hook shank a little bit and then wrap back to get them where I want it. Wrap it down, and as, once I have them where I want them, I'm going to wrap tighter on it. So you can see I just got some little legs sticking out the back. And I'm going to trim the butt sections off. Be careful not to do what I just did and get too close to your thread. Okay, now I'm going to come back by these legs, and we're going to tie our body on. So here's our body section. You see the dub part there. We're going to tie that down right where I tied my knot at. I'm going to tie that right above those legs. And I'm going to make some tight wraps there, get that good and tied in. And tie down just a little bit of that foam. And then we're going to trim it off. And then we're going to continue to wrap that foam body down and make a nice taper there. Now, next thing I like to do is make it just a little bit of a two-tone body. So with that black, I'm going to go with uh, like a brown color in front of it. Uh, this is crayfish brown. Just experiment, see what you know, see what you like best. In nature, a lot of things are multicolored, and so I just like to set it off just a little bit, give just a little bit different look to it. You could put a little helgramite on here too if you want it all the same, that's fine too. So now that I got that on there, we're going to pull our foam up and we're going to make the wing case of this fly. So I'm going to tie right at the end of that brown there where I tied it down, and there makes our body of our fly. And then we're going to trim this foam off so we can make our head. So I'm going to trim it tight, and then wrap that foam into the head. And you see how I got a good hook length and a half there, and I want to go back just a hair farther. And we're going to add a little cider on here. So this is some fluorescent chartreuse antron. And I'm just going to tie that up on top. And double it back over. And then work on my taper. Try not to put too many wraps on there. But there we go. 
So now I'm just gonna trim that off, give myself a nice little cider there, something that I can see on the water as it's drifting. And we're gonna put the last thing on here. That's our CDC collar. For that, I like to do a dubbing loop and I like to use the thread instead of uh, like my, CD, my Swiss clamp twister. I just like to split the thread when I do simple CDC collars like this. So I'm just gonna take the thread on, put it on my finger, and I'm gonna rub it with my bodkin. What that's gonna do is it's gonna flatten out my thread. And once I get it nice and flat, then I can take the needle on my bodkin and split it in half. There we go. So then I just put my finger in that slit. I need that a little bit wider, a little bit longer. So I wanna flatten it out just a little bit farther back. There we go. So there, <clears throat> excuse me, there you see I split the thread with my fingers. I'm gonna put my CDC in that gap there, loosen up my clamp and pull on my thread and that'll tighten it down. Now I want to get the butt sections as close as I can and then I'm just gonna spin my bobbin and tighten that up around her. So I'm gonna get a good, nice good twist on it. Make sure that all those fibers are locked in there. And then I'm gonna wrap it back towards that cider. When I get it back there, then I'm gonna start pushing all those fibers back to make a nice head on this fly until I wrap it right up to the eye. And when I get to the eye, I'm gonna whip finish. one or two good whip finishes on there and we're done now I'm gonna push all these CDC fibers back if there's any that's too long I'm just gonna pluck them with my fingers and uh, that's a good looking fly I like that a lot okay guys I hope you like that pattern I'm gonna show you real quick here a couple other colors that I've tied it in that I really like here you can see some uh, greens and browns and stuff experiment try different colored foam uh, you know like maybe you want to imitate a caddis put a brown back or a green back or something like that to imitate a caddis that's coming off in your area and tie it smaller tie it bigger if you really want to just mess around and experiment and have fun tying that's the key to fly tying uh, finding what works for you, building your confidence. If you have more confidence in your fly, you're going to catch more fish on it. You're going to fish it harder, and you're going to catch more fish on it. So have fun tying, guys. If you need any of the materials, like always, please go to our website, wholesingersflyshop.com, and uh, we'd be more than happy to help you out there with all your material needs. And any questions you have, like always, guys, want me to tie any of these for you, or if you have any questions about how I do something, please reach out to me at wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com. That goes directly to my email address and uh, not through the shop. So, you know, if you want to get in touch with me personally, wholesingersflyshop at gmail.com is the way to do it. So thanks for watching, guys. I enjoy bringing these to you. Uh, until next week when I bring you another one, I'm Sean Holsinger.